Sorry, couldn't help it. Couldn't help it. Hello, I'm Kristen, also known as Villain Vine, here on my YouTube channel, on Instagram, on Ravelry, and pretty much everywhere else on the interwebs. And as always, I'm so happy that you're taking some time out of your day to chat about all the knitting, all the sewing, all the making, or whatever crafty rabbit hole I happen to be diving down this week. <laughs> and Happy New Year, everybody. It is 2020, the dawn of a new decade. I hope you guys are ready for it, because I sure am. <laughs> so anyway, I am back from a three-week hiatus. Thank you so much to everybody for your patience uh, in waiting for me to return. I took a much-needed break. Uh, I will chat more about that in the blather segment at the end of the episode, but I hope all of you had a wonderful holiday season, happy new year, and got to spend time with family, friends, or just enjoy some much-needed downtime as well. Um, I have a lot to catch you up on. I have quite a few announcements uh, this morning at the top of the episode. So hope you guys, you know, grab grab a cup of something and uh, gather around and let's 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 talk announcements. First off, uh, before I get into the nitty gritty about what about what I've been making, uh, on a more serious note, I just want to quickly talk about the Australian wildfires. If you're not familiar, there are currently wildfires blazing across Australia, and the photos that are popping up on my newsfeed and everything they're incredible incredibly devastating and heartbreaking. Um, I have some dear friends out there and it's definitely a place that I have dreamed of visiting and it's still a place I plan on visiting. It's just, you know, ever since I was little, I, I've been wanting to go there because it's just such a beautiful, beautiful place. Um, and yeah, it, it was incredibly heartbreaking to learn about all all the devastation that's happening out there. And I really wanted to do something to help. So this week I am actually donating 100% of all of my pattern sales and I will be donating them to WIRES, which is a wildlife uh, rescue organization for the wildlife in Australia. All manner of creature in Australia, they go out there, they rescue them, rehabilitate them, and you know, it, it's just a wonderful, wonderful organization. And I announced on Monday that I was going to be donating and you guys have just been incredibly amazing. I think at this point we've broken over a thousand dollars US. So I am, I am so, thankful and grateful to all of you who have, you know, donated. And in addition, I will also be donating 10% of yarn sales from my shop update also to wires. So, um, you know, very, 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 very happy about that. Sending all my love to Australia. I know they have a long road ahead of them, but sending positive vibes for a swift recovery and and all that good stuff. So moving along, uh, we have some giveaways to announce. So if you are not here for the giveaways and prizes and all that, all that jazz. I will pop a timestamp in the down bar below so you can skip ahead to what I've been working on over the break. Uh, but in the meantime, let's get on to giveaways because we have a winner. We ha I have a winner to announce with a box of socks knit along and the year of the garment knit along make along. These were year long make alongs and you have blown, you have all, all those who have participated have blown me away by your enthusiasm surrounding the podcast and the make alongs and you guys are amazing. So anyway, I, I'm just ah, all the warm and fuzzies. So, um, you know, as a thank you to everybody for participating, uh, this year I thought I would do something different for giveaway prizes. Um, normally I offer either a, a pattern of your choosing or a hand dyed skein of my yarn, but, um, given that this is going to be the last year for the box of socks, uh, I haven't decided about year of the garment, but I kind of, I do want to clear the decks when it comes to knit alongs and make alongs because right now I'm feeling a little bit overwhelmed. We have the practical that's happening and then the Cal and my Cal that's happening. So lots of make alongs. I think this year I'm going to take a break from the year long make alongs, uh, only just to, for my own sanity. And so I can be present fully for future make alongs. <laughs> and if that makes any sense. So anyway, I thought I would do something different for the giveaways this year and showcase a few makers that I really enjoyed over the past year. And full disclosure, I am not endorsed or in collaboration with any of these makers. They're just some of my favorite makers this year that I want to share the love with you. Uh, so let me get to that. So again, we have two winners and each winner will receive this beautiful, beautiful project bag by Tani Casey, who is a wonderful, talented project bag maker. Um, unfortunately, I did not get to see, I, I, because I didn't get to go to uh, Rhinebeck this year, I 
missed out on the phenomenon that was her booth there. So, um, but I am a huge fan of her, her Etsy shop and I will link to it all below if you would like to get your hands on one. But um, this beautiful, beautiful project bag, it can hold a sweater, I wanna say. Maybe the beginnings of a sweater, um, but it can definitely hold a few projects. Uh, here's her logo on the inside. It has really, really, I love these functional pockets in here, perfect for stuffing patterns and what have you, um, and it is quite deep. So both winners will be receiving this, and they will also be receiving an enamel pin from Home Row Fiber Co. Um, because she has some of the most fun enamel pins and project bags that speak to my soul on so many levels, and I really love her aesthetic and you know her eco-friendly packaging and she's just such an inspiration uh so if you don't follow rochelle uh you should totally check her shop out and her instagram feed she's just awesome so anyway um you will uh win one of these and and a skein of woolen vine yarns in a colorway of your choosing so <laughs> i hope you guys are excited for that so anyway winner number one for box o socks is Du, 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 drum roll. Post number 32, Kiki Lucy, who knit 26 pair of socks this year. Congrats, congrats, congrats. That is amazing. Uh, and I, I will post a photo of her finished box of socks here. Uh, and it's absolutely beautiful. I love all the different colors that are popping out of there. So congrats again, Kiki Lucy. Please email me uh, at the address below and uh, send me your uh, shipping info and I will send out your prize to you um, as soon as I can. And let me know what colorway you would like um, for me to dye for you. Um, so yay. And now we have Year of the Garment. And this was a massive thread, you guys. I, I wanna say there were like over a thousand posts in there, which is mind blowing. Um, and so much inspiration. And it was a very casual make along. So, um, you know, there's a lot of chatter happening and what have you. Um, so it was really, you know, your chances of winning was really based on participation, <laughs> which there was quite a lot of. So the winner for Year of the Garment 2019 giveaway is Post number 1,336, and that is Miranda Vick. Congrats again. Um, and she knit quite a few sweaters this year. I will showcase some of them here. Uh, they're all very beautiful. So big congrats to you again. And likewise, contact me via email, letting me know your shipping info and your uh, which colorway you would like me to dye for you. So. Big congrats to everybody. Uh, thank you so much again for another wonderful year of box of socks and year of the garment. And I have actually been approached about um, people over taking over the, you know, adopting the box of socks knit along. Um, I am actually going to hold on to it, <laughs> not not for selfish reasons, but because my sock mojo is at an all-time low this year, who's to say it might not come back in full force another year? Um, maybe in the middle of the year, who knows? Um, I'm, I'm holding on to it. I'm gonna leave the thread open because I know there's still a lot of conversation happening in there. Um, so just to keep the conversation going and the enthusiasm uh, and you know, just keeping it open. But if you have a podcast and want to start your own box of socks, knit along, make along, by all means, feel free to do that. There's, I have no qualms. There's no, you're not stepping on my toes or anything. It's completely fine. There are so many similar knit alongs and make alongs having to do with socks. So, you know, world's your oyster, go for it. Um, you have, you have my blessing. So anyway, uh, that it, that concludes the giveaways. Um, and we do still have two knit alongs and make alongs that are happening right now. We have the Cal and my cowl, which is a knit along where we're all knitting, uh, my latest, uh, my, my, blah, 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 blah. my latest knitting pattern, Cal and my, which is a cowl that incorporates beads and, um, holding two strands of yarn together with mohair and, you know, but you can do whatever you want. Just knit the pattern, join in the conversation, and I will be announcing a giveaway winner, uh, another giveaway winner at the end of, uh, beginning of February, I should say. Um, and then we also have the practical, practimal, <laughs> is it? I, I, I'm calling it the practical, but it's really just a practical where you can make anything uh, that will fit in your wardrobe, something that you're going, going to want to gravitate towards on a regular basis, um, that, something that goes with a lot of things in your wardrobe at the moment. Um, so, you know, a pretty, pretty boring mall, but, you know, I find that I tend to gravitate towards fun projects, the, you know, 
glitzy, glammy stuff that really doesn't go with a lot of things in my wardrobe. So I'm on a mission to just start creating things that I'm going to want to wear on a regular basis. Um, and this is a six month knit along, make along. Uh, so you can knit, you can crochet, you can sew, you can weave, whatever you want. Um, and that is going until March of 2020. So um, you know, just to let you know about those. And if you would like to participate in those, hop on over to the Bull and Vine Ravelry group where all the information about uh, the guidelines and information about these uh, make-alongs are. So it's a place to be if you want to chat about all that and the conversation happening around this here YouTube channel. So that is a lot of announcements, guys. So thank you for bearing with me. Um, if you're still here, uh, I guess any other announcements I want to talk about? Vlogmas. Vlogmas, I fell off the wagon and I apologize. <laughs> life just got, life got crazy. Um, not, not in a bad way, just, you know, I, I was wrapping up loose ends before going away on vacation and I just got a little burnt out and I decided I'm hopping off the, the Vlogmas bandwagon. But thank you so much to everybody who let me know how much you enjoyed it. I have so much fun putting out Vlogmas videos. You have no idea, but um, unfortunately, back-to-back -back days doesn't really work out for me usually so but when I can vlog I really do enjoy putting them together and you know telling a story in just a short amount of time if, if that makes any sense all right one more announcement before I get into what I've been making this week Vogue Knitting Live is happening not this weekend but the following weekend so there's gonna be a lot of a lot of stuff fringe events and get togethers happening. So you bet, you bet I will be vlogging. Um, so look forward to that if, if, if you're so inclined to. Um, I, I know Ellie Skandier from, uh, Ellie who is Skandier of the Skandier Knits podcast is going to be in town. I can't wait, I can't wait to hug Ellie and see her again and ah, oh, I've missed her, I've missed her so much. Um, so I'm really looking forward to that and getting to see my friends all in one place again um, and it's, it should be a really fun time. I am going, fri I'm actually going Friday night and then I'm going Saturday. Um, so if you do see me, please come up, say hello. It would be lovely to meet you. Um, I do ask if you are feeling under the weather, please do not hug me. Uh, last year I came down with the stomach flu right after and it was not fun. It was not fun at all and I do not wish to relive that. So an air hug will suffice. Um, but in all seriousness, um, if you do see me, please do come up and say hello. We can air kiss, we can air hug, what have you. But. Um, there will be hugs. Anyway, I hope to see you there. I am super excited. Um, so without further ado, let's get into what I've been making. You would think after three weeks off from podcasting uh, and on vacation, I would have some something to show for, a finished object. I do have finished objects, but not in the knitting category, but um, for still on the needles, but almost off the needles is my Felix pullover, uh, which is a pattern by Amy Christopher's. And you guys, this pattern, I, I cannot, wait to get it off the needle so I can wear it. It's just, it, it's going to be so snuggly and so warm and gonna, it's gonna go with everything in my wardrobe because, because mauve, mauve my friends, it's mauve. Would you expect anything less? I mean, you know. Here is what it looks like. It's gonna be not completely crop top, but you know, it's gonna hit my waist just right where my waist comes in. So uh, there's that and then, there's not, you know, basically we're, we're just on Sleeve Island. There's nothing more to write home about other than we are on Sleeve Island. I have one more sleeve to knit. I'm halfway done. Um, so right now it's just around and around and around and then I'm going to decrease dramatically to get this kind of, um, what do you call it? Bishop shaped sleeve at the end, um, which is kind of my own deviation from the original, which is my own deviation from the original pattern. Uh, the, the original pattern actually just has you decrease gradually. Um, but in my experience, uh, I don't bode well with gradual decreases because the sleeves end up becoming sausage casings for my arms. And as many of you pointed out, it's probably because I'm switching from um, knitting in the round to magic loop, which does affect gauge. So to remedy that, and because let's face it, I, I'm, all, I'm all about the poof sleeves, the bishop sleeves, whatever you wanna call them, I am here for it. So I have no problem just modifying the pattern to make it do that. So, uh, yeah, I'm trying to think what else I want to say about it. Um, the yarn again, as I'm using is Sublime Willow, which is some yarn that I picked up from webs when I went to the New England Fiber Fest. Uh, and yeah, it's, 
highly recommend this yarn. It's super affordable. I think I got it for like six bucks a skein and this is all only used about maybe, how many more, I think I have two full skeins left over. So the size that I made, which is the, not the extra small, but the small, the second size up from the smallest, um, only uses about six skeins of that total. So it's very, very yardage friendly, uh, worsted weight, and it knits up super quick. It would have knit up super quick if I hadn't been distracted by all the other things, but here we are. Um, and I can't wait. I, I should ha I will have this finished by the next time I record. So yay, this is the Felix top. It's actually this way is the right way because it dips in the front and the back is raised because of the short, short rows. Um, yeah, so there is one project. Next up is a project that I have not put a dent in whatsoever since middle of December. I'm so far behind on my Land of Sweets cowl by um, a wonderful pattern by Helen Stewart designed specifically for um, Advent minis. Uh, and the yarn is Once Upon a Corgi, her Advent of Woolen Minis, in, uh, a advent calendar inspired by A Court of Thorns and Roses, a book series by Sarah J. Moss, who, uh, yeah, anyway. If you watch the podcast, I don't need to go there. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, I am I'm very far behind on this, and I am actually having second thoughts about finishing it. Um, only because, while it's a really fun pattern, I don't think I'm gonna be... I, mm, mm, it's a little too colorful for me, I think. It's a little too colorful. I think this wants to be something else. While I'm loving all the colors individually on their own, I think combined into a stripey cowl is just yeah, not really, not really Land of Kristen. I don't know. I think I know. I'm, I'm probably gonna rip it out. And actually I was watching Salma who has the Little Big Knits podcast, which is a wonderful podcast. If you don't know Salma, she is I, I love I love her to bits, so um, I will link to her podcast below. But she just knit another pattern by Helen Stewart. Um, I believe it's called... I'm totally blanking on it. But it's a throw pattern, which is actually... Which is also designed for Advent minis. And I think that is what this is going to be ripped out and become. Because I like the fact that it actually uses all 10 grams of yarn. Uh, whereas with this one... Um, it only uses five grams of each skein of yarn from each mini. So I feel like that is a more effective <laughs> effective um, use of the yarn, it, just for, for me personally. Um, and it'd be really nice to have, a, have all these colors in a throw that I can actually throw on the back of my craft room chair and wrap around me when I'm in my craft room in the morning because it does get a little chilly in here. Um, and I really like what Selma did. She held um, each uh, strand of mini together with a, uh, a strand of undyed mohair or cream mohair, and it just looked really, really pretty. So I think that is what this is going to become. Um, so yay, I I'm glad I have another project in mind for it. And, uh, you know, I get to enjoy, I get to enjoy these colorways together in another form, as opposed to feeling obligated to wearing something that I'm not really driven to wear on a regular basis, if that makes any sense. So anyway, but nothing wrong with the pattern. Love the pattern. I totally want to knit one of these in like a, maybe a more muted um, palette that's of more of like a similar shade color palette, if that makes sense. So yay, and that is that. Moving along, let's chat dark arts. What, dark arts? What are the dark arts, you ask? Crochet. Yes, I have been crocheting. OMG, who am I? What is my life? So let me give you guys a little backstory. Uh, before I left it for vacation, I met up with my friend Hannah, who is Kawaii Bookworm on Instagram, and she has the Plays With String podcast. Um, and she recently moved to Hawaii, but she was back in town for Christmas. So there was like a window of opportunity for us to meet up. Uh, we met up in the city at Pearl Soho, uh, just quickly, you know, to hang out, have a knit, grab some lunch and just catch up. And um, we had we had the best time. But um, <laughs> yeah, she was actually uh, crocheting on a, a holiday gift for one of her co-workers and she was um, making the, oh gosh, I'm blanking on the pattern name, but it's a free pattern on Ravelry. I'll pop it here so you know what I'm talking about. But they are so cute. And I was like, I totally wanna, I, I've seen I've seen them on Ravelry before and I've been wanting to make them, but I'm like, ah, it's crochet. But seeing her work on it in person and seeing the finished object, I was like, I have to knit, I have to make some of those for myself. So what do you do? You know, I came home and I got bitten by the crochet bug. So, and it's been a while since I've crocheted before, but here's one that I made. I mean, 
And this is just using uh, some leftover DK weight yarn in my Stoker colorway that I dyed. Um, yeah, it's just like a really cute little leaf coaster. And I, when I started crocheting again, I realized I still don't know a lot about crochet. I know the basics, but I don't, I didn't really know where the, the hook needed to enter and the stitches and everything. I was getting everything like messed up. And then, you know, the symbols on the chart and the abbreviations, I needed a refresher course. So, um, I thankfully signed up for, uh, what is a blueprint? I have a, you know, annual account on, on there or whatever, not endorsed. I just happened to have an account for myself because I, I like learning new techniques. So I went on there and, um, just took a refresher course in crochet, spent the day crocheting my heart out and I was up to speed. So, um, I was able to crank out not one, but, but two of them and you guys, I mean, how freaking adorable is that? And this yarn uh, is actually spin cycle in their, oh, I think it's their DK weight. I don't know what colorway it is, I'm blanking, but it's been in my stash for a while. Haven't had a use for it, but I thought it would be a really cute, you know, color ombre choice for this pattern. Um, so yeah, it's just a really, really fun project. They make great gifts. Uh, so not only that, once I tackled that, I, I don't know if you watched the podcast, I want to say like two years ago, I was bitten by the crochet bug and I got it in my head that I have to make all the doilies, just all the crochet doilies out of really fine, thin, thin thread and everything. And finally, um, I whipped out all of my crochet hooks, all of my crochet thread, and I just Literally, I spent the whole entire day crocheting and I made this. It's not done yet. I'm still working on it, but um, it's a free pattern on Ravelry. I will, you know, post the finished, what it looks like in all its glory on the screen here. But um, yeah, this is what I have so far and it's just super relaxing. Um, and I'm using Knit Picks Curio, which is a 100% cotton. It look, I thought I, I thought it was like a cotton silk blend, but it's actually just cotton and it has a really nice sheen. And of course, of course it's mauve. Um, so would you expect, again, there's no stopping me. Can't stop, won't stop. It's all mauve, all mauve. Um, yeah. So <laughs> I'm actually using a really tiny hook. Uh, a, you, uh, what is it? Um, a size 10 uh, crochet hook, the really teeny tiny one that you use to bead with knitting or that I used to bead with knitting. So, um, but all in all, it's just a really fun, you know, relaxing, meditative um, make so far. Uh, and it's it's not one of those, it's definitely like an audio, like I can't watch podcasts or, you know, divert my attention when I'm working on this. So, but it's good to have, you know, an audiobook or a podcast going in your ears uh, or just, you know, if it is a podcast and it's mostly just talking head, that works too. Um, yeah, but anyway. <laughs> Crochet doilies, yeah, who have I become? I don't know, but I'm having a lot of fun with that. Um, you know, it's I'm trying not to let it take over my entire life at the moment because I do have projects that I wanna finish, but when I don't feel, it, it's, I, I was watching, um, Oh, it is uh, the Squirrel, Squirrel Pie Productions podcast with Tommy, and she was also talking about crochet. It's just something nice to switch back and forth between, um, and just having that option when you don't feel like knitting. It's just, it's just a nice thing to switch things up with. So, yes, that is my crochet rabbit hole uh, this week. Uh, we will, we may have some more next week, but. Um, yeah, that concludes the dark art segment, dark craft segment, if you want to call it that. Um, and moving along, we have we have quite a bit of sewing to chat about, so let's get to that. As for sewing, I am currently wearing two finished objects. Uh, I don't know how well you're going to be able to see this because number one, my top is completely black and <laughs> my skirt is very long and you can't see the, the thing that makes it special. Um, so I will pop a photo of what I'm wearing here on the screen so you can see it in all its glory. Uh, the top is the Rory Top by Seamwork. I think it's, I believe it's Seamwork or Colette. Colette and Seamwork, I think are under the same umbrella. You can purchase the same patterns from both websites. I have no idea, but anyway, it's the Rory Top, uh, which is a really, really fun, easy, quick uh, make. It's just a jersey top. It's a t-shirt, but it has a lot of interest. Um, namely, I'll stand up so maybe you can see. Um, so it's just a basic boat neck uh, neckline with grown on sleeves or dolman sleeves, which I am here for all the way. And then the bottom gathers into a waistband with a tie at the side. 
can see it there. So it's got like two, two ties here. Um, yeah, so there's that. And then the skirt that I'm wearing is the Sorrento skirt. And you are not gonna be able to see it very well, but take my word for it. It's a skirt, you see it in the photo. Um, it is a pattern by Style Arc Patterns. And I heard about the pattern through listening to this Love to Sew podcast. Um, which is a really awesome audio podcast about sewing and gives really great tips and everything. And one of the hosts, uh, I believe it was for the Frocktails event, she, she had mentioned that she made a Sorrento skirt. And I was curious, so I looked it up and I was like, I, you know, something about it I had to make. So it's been on my to make list for a while. And um, with vacation coming up, uh, I, I knew that it would be perfect for vacation. However, there was a caveat. <laughs> um, I had originally wanted, let me see, I'm gonna get the fabric, where'd it go? So on the way back from a holiday party uh, out in Poughkeepsie, I convinced Dennis to make a pit stop at Joanne Fabric because you know, when in Rome. Uh, and I picked up this really beautiful, beautiful um, iridescent paisley fabric. And I don't know how well you're gonna be able to see it, but there are like these Pin, like iridescent pinstripes going throughout. It almost looks like a mermaid fins or a mermaid coloring, like metallic mermaid, some lots of mermaid happening in here. Um, and I bought two yards of it thinking that that would be enough for a Sorrento skirt. Um, so I printed out the pattern and laid everything out and I realized two yards was not gonna cut it. So there went my vacation sewing plans. Um, and I already only had one day to bang out a skirt. I figured, you know, one day is enough to bang out a skirt in time for vacation. And I pretty much spent most of the morning printing out the pattern, piecing it together, cutting it out, and then laying out all my fabric and then realizing I wasn't gonna have enough. So I had to scrap the idea and hold off until I got back. Um, and I did, I do still want to <laughs> uh, make a Sorrento skirt out of that fabric. So I, of course, as I do, um, panic ordered some more from Joanne and thankfully they were having a sale, like free shipping and I don't know, 40% off one regular priced item. So anyway, I ordered more. So that's coming hopefully in the mail today and I can make another one. Um, but in the meantime, I really wanted this skirt in my life and I just, when I got back from vacation, I just really wanted to hunker down and just make something, make something simple, mindless, and a staple for my wardrobe that I was going to reach for. And I had this fabric in my stash that I purchased a while ago. Um, it's this, let me see, Tencel, Tencel Twill. Uh, and I actually, I've never worked with it before and until I was watching the Foldline podcast on YouTube. If you're not familiar, Foldline is kind of like, I want to say the Ravelry for sewing, for patterns and, um, you know, fabrics and everything. Um, but it's not quite Ravelry. It's more of just kind of like a database where you can search, you know, for specific patterns and what have you. Um, but anyway, they have a separate podcast where Kate uh, hosts it and she mentioned Tencel. And I was curious, she, she highly recommended it. So I went on fabric.com and got this olive uh, Tencel twill. And it's really, really lovely. Um, I don't know how well you, you can see that, but it's it's very drapey. Um, it has kind of like a, I don't know, it's made by tree pulp, believe it or not. It's really interesting. Um, and it's, it's, it's very drapey, it's very fluid. It has a really nice hand. It almost feels like cotton and silk. Um, yeah, it almost has like a suede effect to it. Uh, and yeah, it's, it was perfect for this dress. So it's very swishy. Um, it is, it, it does have a little weight to it. So I'm not going to lie. I do, it does kind of like, because it's an elastic waistband, it does have a tendency to, you know, drag down a little bit. So I might have to go back in and tighten the waistband a little bit. So it doesn't want to fall down as it, it, it's not bad, but still I might go in the back end of my of my waist waistband and tighten things just a little bit um, So yeah, I you know, it's it's not it, this was a bit of an investment fabric. I, I'm not gonna lie I believe it's like 20 something something a yard, but um, You know, I, I definitely think it's worth it. It's environmentally friendly. So yay <laughs> and uh, the color I just again I'm trying to work greens into my fat my wardrobe as well um, and if this has been getting so much wear you guys uh, and I will say I'm not a huge fan of elastic waistbands but uh, because I was just the frame of mind that I was in that I just wanted this in my wardrobe and I just wanted a quick make I went with it I went with the flow and figured I could just cover it up with another make 
hence the Rory top. I did post a blog post about it over on my sewing blog, The Peculiar Stitch, so I will link to all that below if you want to learn more about fitting, sewing it together, but all in all it was just a really quick, both, both were incredibly quick to whip up, um, really enjoyable, and I would say like adventurous beginner friendly, um, you know, highly recommend them and, and the like. So yeah, those are my finished objects. I'm um, trying to think what else I want to say about any of these. Um, yeah, I want to say the only time consuming part about the skirt is the, the tiers. So, you know, hemming, there are like two, uh, flounces and you have to hem each, each flounce, uh, each flounce. So there are two. So basically they're like layered on top. But all in all, really simple, came together, the skirt came together in like a day, the top, less than a day, I wanna say like five hours, top came together in about four. Bob's your uncle, sorry, couldn't help it, couldn't help it. Next up uh, is something that I've been working on intermittently, um, trying to finish, but I've, I've since hit a little bit of a roadblock. And that is Dennis's, Dennis's jacket that I've been working on. So yeah. The lining is installed, it's Sherpa lining, which I am obsessed with, but after this project, not so much anymore. This thing is a nightmare to work with. Um, and again, thank you so much to everybody for all your tips about working with fluffy fabrics. Uh, the long stitch really, really comes in handy. It's just, the fluff gets everywhere. But the fabric for the second sleeve came and I installed it and um, Dennis tried it on, it fits. Now, um, I did run into a hiccup with sewing the lining in. So basically, here's the outside. I'll try it on so you can see. I'm probably gonna be covered in fluff after this, but anyway. Anyway, it's super, super fluffy and cozy. And you know, the inside, here's the lining and it does this. But however, once you get up here, I don't, I don't know if that's what's supposed to happen. Um, I think I messed up somewhere in this area right here. Like this is supposed to be back here or something. I don't know. Um, so I'm gonna have to investigate that. If any of you have any tips as to what went on over here, I had to sew it on the inside, flip it out, out right side in. Anyway, um, pocket, that's what the pocket looks like. That's what the sleeve looks like. There's the hood in the back. Seriously guys, this is so freaking snuggly. All that's left to do is fix this. Um, sew the sleeves in, the, the cuffs. Um, insert the buttons and I'll be done. So anyway, yeah, I just, I just have to figure out what's happening here, which I have no idea. So it's a little bit, it's on the back burner for now. Um, but yeah, if anybody has any clue, like what I did wrong here, I have no idea. I'll just have to flip it back out again and figure out what, what went wrong. But again, Dennis tried it on, it fits him. Um, I, all I have to do is troubleshoot what I did wrong on the inside and He'll have he'll have a a jacket. He he actually really likes it. He didn't I he seemed a little on the fence about it when I said that I was gonna make it for him, but he tried it on and he's he can't wait to have it. Um, so let me see where. But yeah, the pattern that I got is McCall's seven six three eight. So yeah, and I'm making view E. So it's whatever this guy's wearing, but obviously no contrasting fabric. So, you know, all in all, pretty simple to put together. It's it's just that one part that I messed up on um, because the, illust I think I couldn't wrap my brain around the illustration. I, I just, it was a little, some of these illustrations are just really tricky to follow. I can't explain it. But anyway, I think that's where I, I hit a roadblock. But anyway, I'll figure it out. I'll make it work as Tim Gunn says, and, and, and all will be great. All will be right with the world. Um, so trying to think what else. I have sewing plans for my birthday. <laughs> uh, my birthday, this is birthday month. My birthday is on January 31st. So I am going to make a birthday dress. Um, Dennis actually surprised me with tickets to Phantom of the Opera on Broadway. So <laughs> we're going to go see that. And I think, I think that that calls for a handmade birthday dress. I, I'm just, you know. We'll see what happens, but um, I haven't decided on one particular pattern yet, but you know, I'm still playing with a couple of ideas. Uh, I don't know how much sewing I'm going to be getting done this weekend because we have some family stuff happening on Saturday, but um, I'm gonna try. By golly, I shall try. Um, 
Yeah, so anyway, that is sewing, and I believe that is the content for the episode. So I am gonna move along to the blather segment where I chat about life stuff. Uh, but first, just a quick heads up about my shop update. Does it even matter for me to, do, does it make sense for me to bring up shop update anymore when I publish this podcast on a Friday? I don't know. I don't know. I really don't. It probably doesn't make sense, but. But anyway, just a quick word about my shop update, which is happening this Friday, January 10th at 5 p.m. Eastern time. And again, 10% of all my sales will be donated to Wires uh, Wildlife Rescue for uh, animals affected by the Australian wildfires. Um, and a huge big thanks in advance for anybody who shops my update. Um, and again, if you'd like to be notified about what colorways and bases uh, are to be expected in each update, you can always sign up for my newsletter by going to my website, clicking on the newsletter link and entering your info. And every week I send out a newsletter letting you know what's happening. Um, so yeah, I am gonna move along to what's happening in my life. Um, so yeah, if you follow me on Instagram, I I got out of Dodge for Christmas. <laughs> uh, Dennis and I, uh, well, first Dennis finally passed his exams. Uh, he also landed a new job, so good on Dennis. And we're, we're very, very excited for him. Um, and we decided we were in much need of a vacation getaway. And I will be totally honest, in popular opinion, Christmas is not my favorite holiday. And I do have no problem making myself scarce during the holidays. Um, I'll, uh, truth be told, um, you know, I appreciate Christmas, but it's just, it's not my favorite holiday. So I, I like, I like getting away when I can. Um, and you know, we, we were, Dennis and I were both stressed out pretty badly. So we're like, you know what, to hell with it. We're just going to go, let, let's go to the Bahamas. <laughs> we're going to go to the Bahamas. So, you know, we, with the intention of getting some sunshine and beach time in, uh, you know, and it's honestly like a two and a half hour plane ride from here. You can't go wrong. Um, the only thing with going to the Bahamas in, in December, late December is that it's not as hot as the rest of the year there. Um, which didn't really occur to us, but you know, we showed up, it was, it was warm, you know, it's, you know, you can hang out in your, you know, beach wear and your shorts or whatever, but we got there, it was like in the high seventies. Uh, it was pretty windy. It was rainy a couple of days. So, um, and the water was much too cold for me to get in, um, unfortunately. So I didn't really get any beach. I mean, we sat on the beach and everything, but I could not go in the water. The pool was too cold. I am not complaining, but you know, it was, you know, I was kind of bummed that I couldn't get into the water. Um, yeah, but anyway, we had a really good time. Uh, we made the best of it, even though it rained. Uh, we went to, we stayed where we stayed on Cable Beach. So um, it's one of their, you know, one of the most beautiful beaches. It just like stretches all around. And then on a rainy day, we went to Atlantis, which is on Paradise Island. So about a 20 minute cab ride over the bridge. And it's this, I can't even begin to describe it. It is epic. Um, it's like essentially like a water park, casino, obviously a hotel, they have restaurants and everything. It's, it's massive, but yeah, it's just a really awesome experience. You get to go in all these underwater tunnels and see sharks. And there's one water slide that actually takes, it's a huge water slide where, you know, you slide down it and then it takes you underwater through a tube, but it's a clear tube and there are sharks swimming all around. And it's just like, what is this place? <laughs> so um, it was a lot of fun. And then, uh, you know, we just kind of hopped along the beach every morning, got our walk in and, but other than that, we pretty much did absolutely nothing. It was one of these all inclusive places. Um, and you know, just really, uh, you didn't have to think or do anything, which I, we both really, really needed. <laughs> and one of my favorite things to do when you go to a hotel is raid their library of abandoned romance novels. And they have other stuff in there, but primarily it's all like these old, you know, trashy romance novels that people leave behind. Um, I found one and just ended up reading it. It's super fluffy. Uh, I think it's called Governess Gone Rogue. Oh yeah, good times. Um, <laughs> so anyway, that was my my chosen beach reading. Um, and you know, obviously got a lot of knitting done. So anyway, it was, it was a really good time uh, and a much needed break. And when we got back, I had the rest of the week to just decompress again, get some crafting done and make all the things because I think that's what I was really craving and longing for. And it was just a nice way to cap off my, my break. So I think I will end things there. Um, yeah, it's just really great to be back. I miss podcasting and chatting with you
you guys. So uh, I'm back and can't wait to get on a regular schedule of podcasting again. So as always, thank you so much for hanging out with me this week. Uh, happy knitting, happy making, happy sewing, and I will see you. I will see you next time. Bye. Thank you.